So I just put out a new article on my Substack newsletter. It's called Dally 2 Recombinant Art and Design. Um, this is a this is a term that I've come up with to describe a category, basically to describe most of the images that I'm seeing generated by Dally 2, as well as other multimodal AI art systems. Um, in this video, I'm going to expand on this article a little bit. You know, the article talks about, well, you know, where does this term come from that I've came up with? Why is it important? Why is it a good term? If you're a multimodal AI artist, if you're interested in Dali 2, it can help you think about uh, how to come up with Dali 2 prompts, different art things, art concepts that you could come up with, um, and as well as where all of this stuff fits into art history, or at least where I feel it fits into, and as well as how it relates to digital media, digital art up until this point. And even towards the end, I can expand a little bit on, on even the future after, you know, this multimodal AI, this recombinant art stage, what's going to be even the next stage, I think, after that. So let's get started. Um, to give you context, so uh, last summer, I put out a series called GPTX DALI and Our Multimodal Future. Um, I'm going to put a link to the article and, of course, this series in the YouTube description below. It will probably be in the YouTube comments. But this series was basically about the future of human creativity. And, uh, you know, the, the opening video, it's, it's called The Essence of Multimodal Creativity, and then it has a subtitle, Mixing and Texturing. Um, this was, you know, this, I felt this idea was so important that I wanted to open the series with it. Um, I felt that this could very well be the very, you know, cornerstone, you know, the, 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 the building blocks of multimodal creativity. Um, and it's exciting to see it pan out. Uh, now that, you know, people have access to DALI 2. And so what is mixing and texturing? So uh, in the video, like uh, in the beginning, I'm, I'm first just like, you know, covering even what DALI 1, what, what that even was and the significance of it. But then I jump into this mixing idea pretty fast. So uh, a pink elephant surfing the internet, right? Uh, this is a kind of, a, a you know, a good example of a prompt that is mixing, in this case, the pink elephant, as well as, you know, surfing the internet. Then I give another example in the video, a bar stool made of cardboard. So in this case, something interesting, perhaps industrial design based, multimodal AI image generation, uh, a bar stool, you know, we're mixing that with cardboard. Uh, this one's a little bit more, you know, here's a fun one, a cartoon illustration of Joe Rogan interviewing a carrot. A funny story I, I did make if you check out my twitter i did make this in dally too and was surprised to see it was, it was possible and a really fun result um but so the point is that you know in this video i described this phenomenon of, of mixing different things and how I, I how i could foresee it uh being so important for multimodal ai creativity in the future the video goes on to sort of uh expand on this even further so um in this one, I proposed a logo generator where perhaps you could upload images you like um, and then, you know, even, you know, include other inspirations, right? Like, you know, Michael Jordan's will to win, even just the idea of that, you know, maybe a basketball net, uh, some other reference company. Um, you know, I, I described other other kinds of phenomenon. Texturing is, is, a, is another big phenomenon. And I, I'm going to, you know, revisit this uh, later on in, in this video. But the point is that, uh, you know, this is something I've been thinking about for a while. And it's funny while writing this script uh, to describe this mixing phenomenon, um, I just, you know, I, I wasn't happy, you know, even to this day uh, because I, I just didn't have a good label for this kind of mixing that that was going on, uh, that, that I had a feeling would be possible with multimodal AI that we saw from DALI 1. And now that I have access to DALI 2, I find I'm mixing more than ever. And it's not just me, but other people as well who have access to Dali. Uh, in this case, you know, illustration of cool oversized grizzly bears in the style of NFTs. Um, you know, you can see a few different uh, bears here. Uh, and if you want to, of, of course, look at these in, in higher resolution, the, the link to the articles is, is, is going to be below in the YouTube description. But uh, again, we're mixing cool oversized grizzly bears with even just the style of NFTs, not even a specific NFT in particular. Um, and sort of what I observed that's really interesting about this mixing, um, a lot of the DALI prompts like this one can be sort of summarized aptly like as a simple mathematical expression. So in this case, we wanted uh, the union of an illustration 
with a cool oversized grizzly bear with the union of the style of NFTs. In this one photo of a drum set made of cheese, again, where we want the union of, a, you know, an image that, you know, is like the style of a photo. So ideally a photograph with a drum set with cheese. You know, I have another one with the, you know, oversized grizzly bear. And, you know, if you, if you follow me, obviously you do, I'm hoping you're subscribed to my YouTube channel. I put out the video with, you know, pencil sharpeners and all the different ways we can use Dali to reimagine pencil sharpeners with all of these different styles I did. At one point I did it in a, a pencil sharpener in the style of a Lamborghini. I did one in the style of Picasso. That's what you see in the thumbnail there. And so even, you know, these sets of Dali prompts and generations can be summarized with this mathematical expression. And so I have, you know, I had sort of, uh, in the series indicated that, you know, this, this could be big. Um, I'm myself, you know, mixing, uh, interesting things. I'm seeing others in the community. But I've just always felt for probably about a year and a half now that there's this gap here, right? Like there's there's just there needs to be an easier way to describe this phenomenon of using AI to to mix things and sort of take a look at their outcomes and see what happens, right? And then, I mean, even now, so I would summarize that this phenomenon, I would describe it as a few things. So you're generating images using text prompts. You're combining the essence of two or more objects, fragments, items, art styles, art techniques, mediums, characters, specific artworks, periods in history, colors, or just ideas in general. It's about combining stuff. You know, you may be prepending or appending text into a prompt, piling in more text descriptions to see what the model generates. Uh, maybe my grizzly bear example up here is a lot like, you know, it's not just a photo, not just a photo of an oversized grizzly bear. You know, he's dressed in an abstract high fashion outfit. On top of that, he's wearing sunglasses. On top of that, he's on the fashion runway. On top of that, it's at Paris Fashion F Fashion Week, right? So a lot going on. Uh, that's sort of what this is about, either at the beginning or the end of the prompt, uh, using modifiers like hyper-realistic or Unreal Engine. Uh, these are sort of, you know, some elements of prompt design to get better results, better quality outcomes that you want. Um, <clears throat> I have here using high level text language to describe characteristics, qualities of a desired art piece as much as possible. Uh, you know, this is maybe another example of prompt design and then creating things which have never, be seen, never been seen before or cannot even be unseen. I recommend you check out that other Substack article about this or check out my video where I'm explaining that too, just like I am here. Um, and so this is like sort of a summary of the characteristics that I'm observing today of this phenomenon, not just in my own behavior, but with other people's behavior as well. And just to sort of, sort of summarize the intro, even the series, you know, I didn't propose a label for it at the time, even though I wanted to, I felt it was too early. And this phenomenon is, I just feel so interesting and so important. Um, and you know, it may very well be an art genre, uh, in of itself. Uh, that, you know, may be, you know, studied in, in art history books in the future. Um, and, you know, I, I did try to do some research, right? Like I tried, one of the reasons I struggled to come up with a name is I myself am, am not an art history expert. I don't know what category of art, if there even is one to describe the, the, this mixing based art that we're doing here in the Dali 2 world. Um, so I say in the article that, you know, all art could very well be some example of this anyways, where you're just mixing elements uh, on the fly. Uh, you could make comparisons of this art to something like avant-garde, mixed media, surrealism, maybe a collage. Uh, the closest maybe art genre that I could found, find was eclecticism, uh, which is the practice of deriving ideas, style, or tastes from a broad and diverse range of sources, which, you know, appears to be very common with Dali 2. And then just randomly, I also uh, was reminded of this scene from The Simpsons where Yoko Ono comes comes in and, you know, she's with Barney and she, you know, Mo asks, what do you want? And she responds with a single plum floating in perfume served in a man's hat. <laughs> and so I sort of watched this scene from The Simpsons and I thought to myself, this is a typical Dally 2 prompt, <laughs> right? Like in the way that it's just so on the fly, a few different objects, a few different things. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's it's very uh, you know, it's it's an interesting concept. It's you're just exploring. 
Um, and it, it almost sounds arbitrary, right? And it's almost something like you'd, you'd see on the Dally2 subreddit or uh, on Twitter or Discord or whatever. And I've, I've generated here below uh, using Dally2. This is what Dally2 came up with. Um, and so uh, if, if we can agree that there may not be an art category that, you know, fully covers it. I mean, this scene from The Simpsons, I think it's got the, a good feeling. It's got the es maybe the essence of it, but um, it's still not quite it. And obviously, The Simpsons are doing this to, to you know, to make fun of Yoko Ono uh, and sort of her uh, sort of strange style, strange art form. And so uh, what is what is the key differentiator? Is there any difference between uh, Dali to multimodal art that we're seeing versus other kinds of art in the past? So uh, in, in my article, I argue that with things like mixed media, or even sampling music beats or these kinds of things in the past, these were very explicit ways of combining previous works. So you, you would make a song, but you would directly be sampling the beat from other from another song and then putting it in yours. And the difference between that and multimodal AI models like DALI 2, uh, DALI 2 isn't you know copying or explicitly uh, taking uh, pieces of other previous works when it's generating yours. What's happened is at training time, it sort of understands the gist of different objects, different art styles, the collective works of Shakespeare, uh, maybe the general look and feel of something like brutalist industrial product design, which I love exploring on, on this channel. And based on this gist of its understanding of this concept, it then incorporates it into your generation when you enter a prompt. And so I argue that, you know, loosely it has learned the idea or features that representations, loosely it has learned the idea or features representations that comprise something and is incorporating its overall understanding of something in, into your work. And so it's almost like DALI 2 is combining the essence of two different things, right? When you enter that kind of prompt and put it together. Um, uh, the system's ability to understand a higher level of hierarchy, compositionality, and abstraction shared between the modalities of images and language models allow multimodal artists to create things artists simply couldn't have dreamt of in the past. And basically, I, I just think it, you know, it's, it's just so important that we, we do come up with a suitable label for this new art style and movement. Um, and again, so the key differentiator is just, it's not about copying things explicitly. It's about copying the essence of two things, the model's understanding of what is the essence of, uh, of one thing and the essence of another. Um, and so anyways, that's why I I'm proposing, I think it's so important. I'm proposing the terminology of recombinant art. Uh, the word recombinant, uh, it comes from genetic en engineering and it means uh, recombinant means formed by the process of recombination, which is the process of combining two different genetic materials to produce a new genetic combination with specific characteristics. Uh, Wikipedia defines it as uh, recombinant DNA molecules are DNA molecules formed by lab methods of ge genetic recombination that bring together genetic material from multiple sources, creating sequences that would not otherwise be found in the geno genome. Uh, recombinant DNA is the general name for a piece of DNA that has been created by combining at least two fragments from two different sources. And so uh, it's, it, you know, recombinant art is basically about using AI uh, to combine the essence of ideally two different things, right? And so going back to our uh, uh, higher examples, you know, it's, it's the idea, it's the model's idea of what a photo is, the essence of a photo the union of that with the model's understanding of the essence of a drum set with the union of that of the model's understanding of cheese. <laughs> and that's how it generates it. You know, it's a recombinant piece of art. Um, the essence of these three things is is combined in, and generated into a single image. And what I like about it, this term is that it captures, it's from the perspective of the creator. That there's a creator there intentionally combining at least two things. Um, I like that it's, you know, it's based on this DNA stuff, which is similar to what I'm proposing that, you know, multimodal art, at least for now, it appears it's about combining the essence of, of two things. Um, 
And then I also like the context that this is all in genetic engineering. It sounds so space age. I mean, we're using AI here. I like the evolutionary aspect as well, that certainly people will build on, you know, the existing kinds of DALI 2 art. They'll, you know, the culture will build on itself and maybe, you know, future artists will be referencing the work of older, you know, multimodal AI artists and then creating even new things, right? And so um, it also sounds like something you'd hear in the tech community. I, you know, I could hear the tech community coming up with something called recombinant art. And this is actually, I'm really proud of it because I think this art and culture revolution is really interesting because it's spearheaded mainly by the tech industry. And certainly many of the earliest DALI2 users are first and foremost technologists, myself included. Um, and, you know, it just sounds like a pleasing term. I can hear creatives asking themselves, what does the recombinant of so-and-so look like? This one is my favorite recombinant of the two, right? Uh, what's the what's the recom in the style of the Picasso? Maybe this could become some kind of slang in the future. Um, and so altogether, I would define recombinant art as AI-generated works which involve combining the essence of at least two fragments, ideas, or things in new, surprising, or unexpected ways. And so if we can agree perhaps on this on this word, this definition to describe this period in art history, uh, as well as this genre of art, um, I, you know, I, w the question is, where does it come from? Well, in, in, in the first uh, part of this section, I, I basically argue that, you know, we've ended up in this, in this uh, format uh, as a limitation of the models themselves, right? They, they only take in by design text and then generate images. And so it takes in a prompt, it generates an image. And so as a result of this and the other hard technical specifications, of the model like DALI 2 itself, um, that's how you end up with something like recombinant art. Um, you know, in the future, as DALI becomes even more capable and intelligent, maybe DALI 3, DALI 4, we will have new kinds of artistic possibilities and perhaps we will exit this stage of recombinant art to something new and different. Um, and I, the other reason I think we ended up with recombinant art I think there's an inherent bias, uh, which is just found in the technical community itself. Earlier on, do you remember where I was talking about how it's so interesting, a lot of DALI 2 prompts can be just combined or explained in these simple mathematical expressions? Um, I think part of the reason this is, is it's just a reflection of the very, you know, logical, analytical side of the brain <laughs> that the tech community, tech community runs on. You know, we are a heavily logical. And so perhaps there's something about this recombinant, this, you know, mathematical, this approach of mixing, which is just a convenient shorthand. You know, it's an easy approach where technologists can learn to be more emotionally expressive, creative and artistic. Um, and so maybe there's a bias here, why we sort of trend towards this direction. It's a reflection in many ways of who we are and how our own minds are wired. And finally, I just think it's a big opportunity this level of higher, uh, this higher level artistic abstraction, this is something new that we've never had the skill or the ability to do ever in human history. And so it's such an exciting opportunity, not just creatively, but as a business opportunity to pursue. Um, and you know, many existing artists who are very successful immediately see the tremendous opportunity that's possible through a system like DALI 2. And so I've, I've sort of covered all together, like what is recombinant art sort of why it's been bothering me for a year and a half now and sort of how I feel like I'm living in it and living through it um, as a member of the DALI 2 beta. Um, <clears throat> I just want to sort of summarize now like how I think recombinant art fits into this larger scheme of things, right? And so I've even uh, came up with this diagram. I, I don't know what, what's going on with me lately. This is my second diagram. If you remember my last video last week, uh, it had an iceberg <laughs> in this case. Uh, we're looking at layers of soil that I felt was a good analogy for uh, a layered taxonomy about how recombinant art fits into the grander scheme of things. I'm talking when it comes to pop culture, digital media, that kind of that kind of area. So um, I would say like recently, maybe, you know, 1970, 1980 plus, it was all about sampling, especially in music. Um, you know, it's about taking segments of things and making something new perhaps sampling, you know, not just 
not just musical instruments, but lyrics, speeding them up, slowing them down, right? Changing the tune, changing the pitch. Um, then, uh, so that's at the bottom layer. And, uh, you know, the, the important thing is, you know, sampling is a very explicit representation. You are making a new song and you can listen to, listen to it and sort of derive the specific, uh, pieces and elements from other songs that were taken. And, you know, it's very explicit. You're sort of copying a piece of something and putting it into yours. Above that, I think, is is remixing, right? Like just this idea that, you know, you, you are explicitly mixing two things um, and you're, you're able to, to get back something new and interesting. Perhaps there's similarities between two or more works, right? You can add your own layer of beats and strings to it um, and, you know, have something new. And of course, remixing and sampling, these are the result of new kinds of music tools, digital media, uh, you know, it wouldn't have necessarily been possible before. And so through digital media, we got these two things. And sort of uh, multimodal recombinant art, I'm arguing today, this kind of mixing, um, I think this is where we're at. Um, and the difference between multimodal recombinant art and remixing and sampling, I would argue, is it relies more on implicit representations. Uh, these are the implicit representations of a model like DALI 2, basically the essence of something uh, in order to do the mixing. And so again, you know, DALI 2 has an implicit representation. It understands the essence of what uh, Harry Potter might look like or what a Harry Potter movie or a poster or how the collective works of Shakespeare, uh, what the essence of that even is. And so when you use that keyword in your DALI 2 prompt, it's not pulling in an explicit representation. It's not copying some image, some fragment of an image, it's sort of got an idea of what that should look like and it's incorporating that now into your work. And on top of that, so this is where we are now with multimodal recombinant art. Again, it's about uh, mixing with the essence of different things. Um, I think this, this is the current wave we're in. To be honest, I think it may go on for a while. We're just scratching the surface. But perhaps in a year or two, I actually think multimodal recombinant art will then evolve into something uh, even more complex, something more deeper uh, with texturing. And so, uh, you know, this is another idea I've talked about in the past. I briefly touched on it in the series. Um, I even had a podcast episode. The article link is here uh, last year. Um, but I actually think texturing could be the next layer above multimodal recombinant mixing. And the, the idea with texturing is basically... Uh, you're mixing with several layers of things, right? Um, uh, you might you might have um, you know uh, something going on, and then there's maybe some texturing there based on the collective works of Shakespeare. But uh, also there's you know maybe some another layer of some texturing uh, based on the essence of Frank Gehry's architectural designs. Um, then on top of that, you know, there's like a, a bear, but a specific kind of bear, <laughs> right? And in the end, through the process of texturing, you end up with something deeper and something totally new. And I think textured multimodal AI recombinant art of the future, I'm talking maybe in the next two to two, two to three years, it will always have this quality that you can't quite put your finger on all the different things that are going on. It, you know, you you might feel there's a lot of similarities with stuff you've seen, but you can't quite explain it or capture it. Whereas in the current state with mixing, I feel you can kind of look at it often and determine what essences of things, what periods of history, what what different elements were uh, were used. Um, this texturing one, I think it adds more cloud cover. I think it's it's harder to guess all the different influences, and so. Uh, I guess that will also be the future. And of course, that's a limitation of, of DALI 2. Perhaps in DALI 3, they'll add support for things like layers, like you see in Photoshop, or something node-based where, you know, you can have multiple sources of essences, of, you know, influences and inspirations of different proportions, different weightings. And from, from a combination of that, you, you know, you then have something totally new. And so anyways, uh, that that is the end of the piece. It's called... Um, DALI 2 recombinant art and design. This is a term I'm really excited about. I've spent a while thinking about it. 
And I'd love to hear what do you all think, uh, particularly on the area of art history. Am I completely wrong on this one? Uh, are you guys open to a different term? Do you have a different term in mind that adequately describes it? Do you feel recombinant art is 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 you know quite ap aptly covers the the range of Dali two generations you're seeing? Um, how would you describe this this era of uh, multimodal based AI art? Um, and do you see this kind of art becoming the mainstream? So so many different things. Uh, to talk about in the comments below. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear what you all have to say. Anyways, I'm going to put the link to this article below. I'm going to put a link to the series below. Um, and of course, I'm, I'm going to have more of these Substack news articles. I have more ideas about DALI 2 and what it could mean for the future. So please make sure you like this video and you're subscribed to my channel. That's it for today. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.